Good morning, everyone. Praise the Lord. Shall we all stand? And let us begin our worship with a word of prayer. Let's pray. Dear God, Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you, Lord, for this beautiful, bright morning that you have given us, O oh Lord. Thank you for being with us in this week. Whatever we do, this is everything is because of your grace and mercy. We are blessing, O oh Lord. Lord, this moment I commit into your mighty hand, Lord. Now we are going to praise you. Please be with us and help us. We invite your Holy Spirit, please be with us so that we can be able to praise you throughout our heart. And Lord, I commit into your mighty hand for this time. We pray in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us sing one song, blessing and honor to glorify his name. Psalms number 105, Psalms number 105, verses 1 to 4, it says, Give praise to the Lord, proclaim His name, make known among the nations what He has done. Sing to Him, sing praise to Him, tell of all His wonderful acts. Glory in His holy name, let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Look to the Lord and His strength. Seek His face always. Through this scripture, may God bless us. <laughs> 
Let us continue to sing You are beautiful beyond description. Father in heaven, how we 
Let us pray. Merciful God, thank you for being with us till today, Lord. So thank you so much for your presence. Oh Lord, we all are gathered here under your protection and care, Father. Thank you, Lord, that you gave us this beautiful morning to see and praise your name and glorify your name, Father. Oh Father, now we are going to listen to your word, Father. So be with us and help us to understand and give us your understand power, Father, so we can able to understand each and everything, Father. This time I commit and submit into your mighty hand to the preacher, Father. Oh, Father, whatever she prepared, be with her and help her to speak, Father. Oh, Father, and Father, give us your understanding power, Father. I believe that you are hearing and answering our prayer. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. I give praise to our Almighty God for this time, for this precious time that He has given us. We have come together again to hear the Word of God. And I give praise again, once again, to God for this time that He has given you and He has given you. Today, I have brought you from the book of 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 1, true 3. The heading says, Samuel anoints David. Samuel anoints and anoints David. So when we read through the book of Samuel, or when we look into the background, we see very important figures like Samuel, Saul, and David. The whole story revolves around these three people. Um, at the beginning of 1 Samuel, we see the story of how Samuel was born and how he was sent to the temple to be with the priest Eli and how he grew up and became the priest and leading the Israelites and also we see about the rise of monarchy, the rise of King Saul and his disobedience story and also the rejection of Saul by God and the, the anointing of King David. So when we read uh, the last chapters of 2 Samuel, we will read about how King David passed down his legacy, his crown to his son Solomon. So when we read first and second Samuel, first and second Samuel, we read about the three important personages: Samuel, Saul, and King David. Coming to the chosen passage, the chosen passage, Samuel, first Samuel chapter sixteen verse one to and three. First Samuel chapter sixteen verse one to and three. Here we see the story of how God sent Samuel to go and anoint David and how God sent Samuel to go and anoint David, one of the sons of Jesse and he anointed David and that is how David becomes the king but uh, I will not be dealing with the whole story but I will just be dealing with the three, first three verses that is verse 1, 2 and 3 um, as we read through the whole book, whole chapter, we will find out so many lessons. We will be able to fish out so many lessons, but particularly on the three verses that I have brought today to concentrate, to study. Okay, so the lesson that I will be giving you, the lesson that I have brought out from these three verses is rejection and anointment. Rejection and anointment. Rejection and anointment. Let me read the scripture passages. 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 1, 2 and 3. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you mourn for Saul, since I have rejected him as king of Israel? Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse the Bedouhamite. I have chosen one of his sons to be a king. But Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears about you, he will kill me. The Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice and I will show you what to do. You are to anoint for me the one I indicate. 
For this is a scripture passage here in verse 1. Looking in verse 1, we see that Samuel is mourning over Saul. Why is Samuel mourning over Saul? Why is Samuel worried about Saul? Why is Samuel weeping over Saul? And as we read the previous chapter, chapter 15, as we read, we come to an understanding that Samuel is weeping over Saul because God has rejected Saul. God has rejected Saul. And why did God reject Saul? Because, simply because Saul did not obey God. Saul did not obey God. Uh, we will see the whole story and also the verses that says that God has rejected, God has rejected. In verse chapter 15, verse 26, we see that God has rejected Saul as a king of Israel, as king of Israel. And also chapter chapter 15, verse 35, we see that the Lord will created for making Saul the king. The Lord will created for making Saul the king. Because God has given certain instructions. Uh, to go on a war with the Amalekites and do certain things, but Saul disobeyed. Saul disobeyed. Another was the reason that the king has rejected, that the God has rejected King Saul. Samuel is mourning because he is worried for the people of Israel. He is worried for the people of Israel. He is thinking, what will happen what, if Saul is rejected? If Saul is no more the king, what will happen to the people of Israel? And the word here used mourning is. Uh, the Hebrew word for mourning is abhel, abhel. The same word is used when the people of Israelite mourn after the death of Moses. That is not simply crying, but weeping with deep regret and deep sense of pain. And also it is used when King David's son died. King David's son who Bechiba died, he was mourning. So this mourning is a, a feeling or an expression of great pain. So Samuel was feeling the same thing. He was mourning over Saul. He was mourning for the people of Israel, thinking what would happen to them. And the next verse we see is when the next verse we see is the first we see that God has told Samuel, Why have you why are you still mourning for Saul? I have rejected him. And we see why the Lord has rejected him. We see why the Lord has rejected him. And again, in the following, the continuation of verse 1, it says, God, uh, The Lord instructs someone, the Lord says, Fill your horn with oil and go to Jesse the Bethlehem, in Bethlehem. I have chosen one of his sons to be the king. So, the Lord will not simply reject and the Lord will not simply leave it there. The Lord is still God of Israel. He is the God of Israel and He is still thinking for Israel. Even when Saul is disobedient and he rejected Saul, he is still thinking for the Israelites. He is already planned. He has already planned who is going to be the next king to rule over the Israelites. And someone did not know that. Someone is worried about who will be the next king. But God has already in mind that son of Jesse, one of the sons of Jesse will be the king. So he tells to Samuel, take a, hip, take a, take a horn, they fill the horn with oil and go and go to Bethlehem. So um, here we see the instruction. What is this oil? Why oil? Because oil in all the ways they use oil for anointing. Oil is the significance of the Holy Spirit. Of Holy Spirit in water. Of Holy Spirit in water. So when this is a sign that the person has been anointed, the person has been chosen, the person has been picked, the person has been picked by God and the Holy Spirit is with him. So God instructs someone to take the oil and live for years. And when God gave those instructions to someone, we see the reply of someone in verse 2. We see the reply of someone in verse 2. He said, how can I go? If so, who cares about it, he will kill me. So now, at first he was worried about Saul. Now he is worried about what if Saul finds out about it and kills him. So Saul is a very bad person. He knows about it and he already knows that if Saul hears it, Saul will kill him. He is worried about his life. He is worried about if Saul finds out that God has anointed another person to be the king, he is going to be killed. And if Saul finds out that he is the one who anointed, he is going to be he is going to be killed. So he was worried. But we see we see the reply of God. God replied, and God did not say, don't worry, God did not say, it's okay, God did not say that. God simply ignored what someone said. God simply ignored the question of someone. Sometimes we find ourselves there. God has given us a, an instruction to do this to them. And we still complain, what if, what if, 
we still complain, we still complain. But God, that is that is not important. The complaint is not important. That is why God ignores our prayer. Sometimes God ignores our prayer. Sometimes God ignores our complaint. Because it is not important. Because the Lord has already said, and He has already said, He has already said that the son of Jesse will become the king of Israel. The son of Jesse will become the king of Israel. And God is only concentrating on what He has said. So when Samuel asked the question, What shall I do if He hears about it? He is going to kill me. God still ignored and God continued to say, God continued to give instruction. What instruction did God give to Samuel? The Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. So, what is a heifer? A heifer is a cow. It's a cow or it's a cattle that, that is young. That is a female, female cattle, female cow that has not given any Calf that has not given any baby calf, so um, it signifies sacrifice. It signifies it signifies young. It sacrifices um, the young and the innocent and the clean animal before it has given any baby. Before it has um, before it has grown old, it it simply signifies the fragility, the fragile. Okay, so. Um, God instructs Samuel to take the Hebrew and go and make a sacrifice. So when we talk about sacrifice, we see that the best one is made for sacrifice, the clean one is made for sacrifice. And you can bring an example of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was clean, Jesus Christ was worthy, Jesus Christ was not worthy to die, but he was he was sacrificed. He was his life was laid down for us. His life was a sacrifice. His life was a sacrifice for our sins. So, we see that Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ is here. Jesus Christ is here in the anointment of King David. And it is also a blessing, it is also a blessing by God saying that Jesus Christ will be born from the line of King David. Jesus Christ will be born from the genealogy of King David. And yes, Jesus Christ was born from the, from the genealogy of King David. And this Jesse, whom God is instructing someone, this Jesse is the grandson of Ruth. Is the grandson of Ruth. We remember Ruth, Ruth, the daughter-in-law of Naomi, and also the wife of Boaz. So we know that Ruth is also in the genealogy of Jesus Christ. So um, David, um, who is going to be the king, is also in the genealogy of Jesus Christ, and he is the great grandson of Ruth. He is the great grandson of Ruth. So here God instructs. God instructs someone to take the Hebrew and make sacrifice and go. And go to and go to the bed, and go to the bed, and make a sacrifice. And the Lord can need to say, invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what to do. Do I to anoint for me the one I indicate? So the Lord simply ignored what Samuel was 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 saying, and he said, take a few and go, and I will show you what to do. He said, I will show you, you don't have to worry about anything, you don't have to worry about it simply means you don't have to worry about who will kill you, who will do what. You don't even have to choose. There are so many sons of David uh, of Jesse, but you don't even have to create your head and choose. I will show you what you should do. And also I will anoint you. And also you will anoint the one whom I indicate, the one whom I will instruct, the the one whom I will see. So this way. Someone takes the heifer, someone takes the oil and goes to Jesse. And when we read the whole story, we this another whole story how he he chooses one of the sons and anoints him. He chooses David and anoints him. There were so many sons that came one by one, but no one was worthy in the eyes of God. God said that this is simply an outer experience. God is looking at the heart and he chose the heart of King David. He chose the heart of David and David was anointed as the king. So this is a totally different story. So what I brought today is simply uh, is only the first one to entry. The rejection, the rejection, the instruction, rejection, instruction, and the anoint, anointment. So what we learn from these verses, what we learn from this, particularly these three verses, is that when we disobey God, when we disobey God, God rejects. When we disobey God, God rejects. God rejects the things that we that are bad, God rejects. But God does not simply reject and leave, 
lives with their God did not simply reject Saul and leave the Israelites all by themselves. God still takes for the Israelite people and God has in mind whom to be the next king. So God rejects, God ignores sometimes, but God is already planned for something greater, something good for the people of Israel. And that is how he asks Samuel. And also we learn a lesson not to be moving at a place where where there is no meaning, where there is no use. So someone has simply been mourning over soul, which is not important. So move out from the place, move out from that morning and move to a place because God has something greater for you. God has something greater for you. God has greater anointment for you. The instruction is there. God has rejected the path, but the instruction from God is there. You wake up from the place, from the place where you are mourning. You wake up from the place where there is a hell, where there is mourning. And you go to a place where I will show you and I will instruct you. And I will anoint you. So God said, I will anoint you. And that is how God anoints the king. God anoints the new king. God anoints King David, the second king of Israel. So, even in our lives, we can apply this very much in our lives. Sometimes we fail, sometimes we, uh, sometimes things does not happen only and we are worried. But when we follow the instructions of God, we don't have to be worried. And sometimes, like so, we are filled with, what, like Samuel, we are filled with so many doubts and questions asking, how do I do this? What will happen? What if? But God simply ignores the question because those are not important. What is important is the, the plan that is ahead of you, the plan that is ahead of you the anointment, the greater blessing that is ahead of us. So God simply ignores our unnecessary questions, unnecessary complaints, and He keeps for us what He, what he has said it will happen. So He has uh, prepared an anointment. He has prepared a temple for us in the presence of our enemies. That is what King David says. So rejection, rejection, instruction, very important that we follow the instruction like someone. We follow the, we follow the instructions of King someone. Uh, Please someone and we get anointment. And that is how the true someone there was anointment. There was a new king for the Israelites. True someone there was anointment for King David and a new king for the Israelite people, a new blessing for Israel. Let us also follow the instructions of God and be anointed and wait for the greater blessings to come in our future. Thank you. Let us all to God and pray. Thank you, Lord, for this blessing that we have even us, Lord, for the word that has come through my mouth. Lord, many times we fail to understand your plan and we question, we complain about it, Lord. But not knowing the greater plans that is ahead of us, Lord. But we pray that you give us the strength, you give us the faith, you give us the discerning power to know your plans, to know your to know you every day, to know you more, Lord. That we will abide in your plan, in your will, and in your anointment, Lord. Help us to follow the instructions of you, the instructions that comes from you, so that we will be able to anoint and so we will receive the anointing and bring a greater blessing to ourselves, to our community, to our churches, and to the world. We pray our, we pray and we make these supplications in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen.